Concept getters, how are you? I hope everything is going well and that you're going to understand this concept of graph interpretations, okay? So with, as you can see here, we have a graph of F. The graph of F is this one, and then the graph of G is this one. So if you want to understand what G of X or let alone F of X, what it is, you must know that a G of X is just Y. Even F of X is just Y. And what are Y in our graphs? They are just the function, the whole graph, basically. So when I draw a graph and I say Zupu, that graph is your Y, right? So the minute you are given F of X is equal to G of X, they mean the function is equal to the function. They cut each other. Clear? So if two functions are equal when they cut each other or when they intersect each other. Clear, right? So you can see here our red graph, which is our F here, will cut our G where here on this point and this point so that's where the graphs are going to be equal to each other right but remember they said for what values of x so they just want the values of x so you're going to see on this point here our x value is three and then again on this point here our x value is negative two clear so you're going to say oh my answer will be what my answer will be x is equal to negative two Union, union is just a fancy way of saying R, right? And X is equal to 3. And that's all they were looking for. So now we're going to go where they say F of X is equal to 0, right? Where is our F of X equal to 0? It is where our Y value is equal to 0. Where is our Y value equal to 0? It's where we have the X intercept. Remember, every time when you're solving for X intercept, you're going to say for X intercept, let Y to be 0. Well, here it is. Your y is already zero, which means you're just going to calculate what? Your x-intercepts. Why is it the case? When you look at the x-axis, x-axis is where your y-axis is zero here. Remember, our y is positive on this side and it's negative on this side, right? So where x-axis cuts the y-axis, that's where the y is zero, which means any point on the x-axis, on top of the x-axis exactly here, any point that is here is where your y is zero. Clear. So when they want the remember the question says for what values of x, right? So if they say what, for what values of x, what are you gonna do? You're gonna write the values of x where y is zero, and where is our y zero? Is when the graph cuts the x axis. It cuts here, our f of x. Remember our f of x is the red one, right? So I'm gonna be like, oh, which means it cuts at negative one and four at exactly those points. Clear, guys. So I'm going to write it. I'm going to be like, oh, which means my my y is 0 where x is equal to negative 1 union and where else is also x is equal to positive 4. And then I'm done. Clear, guys. Remember, two functions are equal where they cut each other. A function is equal to 0 where it cuts the x axis, basically your x intercepts. Clear. Now, when, let's look at the third one. Now, we are talking about the G of X. We don't only want where it is zero, but we want where it is greater than zero. So now, remember, I said G of X or F of X are Y, right? So if we say G of X is greater than zero, we mean Y should be positive. When you look at your Cartesian plane, you can see that if we have the X axis here, right? On top of the X axis here, that's where we have positive Y values. And underneath here, that's where we have negative y values so your function will be positive if it is on top of the x axis and your function will be negative when it's under the x axis does it make sense so if i want this one to be correct i will check my g of x remember they're asking for g of x i will look at my graph which is the green one here and i will check where it cuts the x axis so it cuts exactly here at one right it means it was under here it was under the x axis where y is negative and then at one it was exactly zero remember it cuts the x axis at one meaning that's where the graph is zero right and then after it cuts it continued with its uh, journey and it went here where our y values are positive so basically from one when you look at the value one here right before one when you go in this direction you realize that your g of x is negative but when you go to the right, you go in this direction from 1, your, your 
g of x is positive so your g of x is positive on top of the x axis right so i don't know if you understand so far but you can see that here it's positive because it's on the positive y value y, y axis right and in here it's going to be negative from here this direction because it's on the negative y y values so when you look at when you look for the answer for this one you're going to be like my g of x is positive where it's going to be positive where after after one because from here to this direction that's where it's positive it's on top so when you represent it when you write it you're going to say what you're going to say x is greater than one because all the values when you look at one here all the values that go in this direction are greater than one others prefer using the interval notation so we call it so they can say x is the element of what and they start at exactly one remember from one to positive infinity so they're going to write exactly that and say two positive infinity infinity always takes a curve bracket right always and then if there was an equal sign like a line under a line under the greater than sign we were going to include because here there will be an, a line right but because there ain't no line there i'm just going to do a curve because the one is not included clear so i'll just write it nicely so you can either present it like this or like this it depends on which one you prefer and now let's move on to the next one number four number four is more like my favorite actually number five is but let's look at number four right number four is where f of x is less and equals to zero guys let's look at f of x f of x is here you see here 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 on this side and on this side we can see that's where our f of x is on the negative side of the y axis do we agree with that remember they said less than zero which means we look at where it's negative meaning under the x axis right guys so we can see that f of x is negative here and here so it's going to be under the x axis where before the negative one we look at where it cuts the x axis and we're going to be like on this side of it because that's where it goes right and then again on this side of it that's where it goes down so you're going to be like before negative one and after four that's where your f of x is less and equals to zero so you say before negative one and after positive four that's where your f of x is less and equals to zero so when you present it you can say what when x is less than negative one because every value on this side is less than negative one right and you say union right and again where x is greater than positive four because all the values from four to this direction are, po are greater than four right and you say and then you are done but remember this is not the final answer there's an also equal here they included it you see it here so if they include it, it means you also include and you also include. But other people will prefer the interval notation, right? So if you prefer an interval notation, this is what you're going to do. You're going to say we moved from negative infinity up until 1, right? And then we moved from 4 up until positive infinity. Clear? So you're going to be like, okay, if I write it, I will say x is the element of, then you say from negative infinity to negative one then you say union and again from four to positive infinity i prefer doing the brackets later so that i analyze what is given right then i will check now remember i said where you see infinity you put the curve brackets all the time and then now you interpret whether you need a square bracket or a curve bracket based on whether the equal sign was there whether it was included or not but because on this question there was that line under the equal sign it means it is included we're going to use a square bracket so i'm going to be like on one i will include even on four i will include so those are square brackets on one and four but if that sign this sign here was not there it was just going to be curve brackets all the way through does it make sense so basically this means x is the element of from negative infinity to negative one which is included union from positive four which is included to positive infinity and if you use the inequality interval, you're going to say x is less and equal to negative 1 union. x is greater than and equal to 4 because 4 and negative 1 are included. Does it make sense? The last one is my favorite. It's my favorite, guys. 
Remember now, they say here, f of x multiplied by g of x is greater than zero. Here on, on question four, I was telling you where f of x is less than zero, right? Now we want to check where both these two, when you multiply them, they give you a positive solution. So this leads us to first multiplication of integers or just signs. So I'm going to say, let's write it on, on the side. Because here we need a positive. I will say which signs when multiplied by each other will give me positive. I'll be like, no, like signs, when I have negative times negative, I will get positive, right? And when I have positive times positive, I will get positive. So I will only use these ones for this particular question. If it was less here, I will use different signs. Make sense? So now, now that I know that, I'm going to be like, if my f of x is positive, g of x also has to be positive. And then again, if my f of x is negative, g of x also has to be negative according to this, according to this here. So I will check now on the graph. I'll be like, okay, I will draw vertical lines just to make it easy for myself, right? I'll use um, gray. I will draw vertical lines that will cut the x-axis where our graphs were also cutting the x-axis. Like this point here, you remember, you see this point, let me use blue. You see this point, f was cutting the x-axis. This point again, my g was cutting the x-axis. And this point again, my f was cutting the x-axis. I will draw vertical lines on those points, right? So I'm going to say, using my, my gray, I will say, I have a line here. I will just draw it and say, v -v 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 -v. right? It's on negative one, right? And I will draw another one on one here. I'll say, v -v 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 -v. right? And I will draw another one on four. I'll say, v -v -v -v. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at between here, between negative one and one. You see negative one and one. I will check between those two points. I'll say between this and this, what is happening with the graphs? And I'll say between this one and this four, what is happening? And before minus one, again, what is happening with the graphs? And again, after four, what is happening with the graphs? So I'll say in between here and also in between here and also afterwards here and also before here. What was happening with the graphs? I want where the graphs are either both positive or both negative. Clear? So I'm going to check now. When I look at this side, what do I see? Both my graphs are negative. You see the, the, the graph of F was going down. And also the graph of G was also going down. You see? So which means they are both negative because they are under the x-axis. So I'll be like, oh, if they are both negative and positive, that's where now... It, that's where now I want the solution. So I'll write the solution. I'll say before negative one, that's where I want it. So I'll just put a tick where they are both. Or I can just write the signs. I'll be like, here it's negative. Here they are negative, right? And then now I go between negative one and one here, in between here, right? I'll be like, in here I can see my uh, F is on top of the X axis, right? But my G is under the x-axis, which means my f is positive when my g is negative. Do you see it? And now I go to between 1 and 4, in here, in here, right? I'll check the graphs again. I'll be like, I can see both of them are on top of the x-axis, which means both of them are positive. I can see my f is positive and my g is also positive, right? And then now I go to after 4 here. I'll be like, this one is positive, actually, because it's on top of x, right? Which is the g. And then this one is negative here after 4, right? Because it's under the x-axis. So which means it's negative. So this one is negative, right? Let me do this. This one was positive and positive. This one is going to be positive, And this one was negative. Clear? So I will only go to the part, remember, considering these lines, right? These lines moving downwards between these lines. I'll only consider the terminal, uh, the intervals where both are either negative or positive. So where are they both negative? Before negative one, as you can see here, right? And also where are they both positive? Between one and four, right? Because here they are both positive. So those intervals are your solution. So I'm going to be like my answer is what? Where x is less than negative 1. Because when you multiply negative times negative, you're going to get greater than 0. Does it make sense, guys? So I'm going to be like, oh, this is actually my answer. I'll be like, my solution is x should be less than negative 1. And I'll say union. And then here, 
my x should be greater than 1 but less than 4 because it's in between. Remember, the values here are represented by x. So those x values will be greater than 1, but the same x values will be less than 4. So when I write it, I'll say union, put x in between, and say x will be greater than 1, but it's going to be less than 4. So as I write it, it's going to be x is greater than 1, but less than 4. If you want to use uh, the interval notation, you're going to say x is the element of, remember, from negative 1 going this side, but you're moving to this direction. So you're coming from negative infinity, right? So you're going to be like, I was moving from negative infinity to what? To negative 1. So you're going to say, x is the element of negative infinity to negative 1. And say, union. And then here, in here, you're moving exactly from 1 to 4, right? So you're going to be like, oh, and also, again, what? From 1 to 4. And then you look at the question. The question here, if I use black, the question here did not use n equal to, which means nothing is included, right? So if nothing is included, what you're going to do? You're going to just use curve brackets all the way through. Makes sense. And then you're done. So guys, that this one, you must watch this video at least three times and look at another question from past papers and try it and see if you really understand. And this one, again, you know this one, you see this one, if it's given like f of x, let's say they said f of x over g of x, this is the same thing. You're going to be like negative over negative should be positive. Positive over positive should be positive. And then you do, basically, the way you treat division is the same way you're going to treat multiplication. Or just make it look like it was f of x multiplied by g of x and do it like this. And the answers are going to be the same. Except if there was an equal sign, but that's another topic for another day, right? I can do one video for it. But anyway, I hope, guys, you understand. Otherwise, all the best with your exams and all the best with everything in your life. All the best with your future, your career. All the best with the food you're going to eat today. All the best with the water that you're going to drink. All the best with the exam mark that you're going to get with it, with it, which is a distinction, right? All the best with everything, guys. Oh, wait, wait. All the best with the air that you're going to breathe. Come on. Remember to do what? To do this, guys. To do this, to do this. And you're going to do what? You're going to subscribe. If you're new, right? You subscribe and then you share so that other people can find what you just found, right? If you're old, all you need to do is just share and like because you like it. I mean, if you are here and you are, you are coming back, it means you like this. Come on, guys. And then you can also tell me what you'd like me to do next time. Which topic you'd like me to treat and, 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 and. Otherwise, all the best with the air you're going to breathe.